As you already know, these piezo discs are often used as contact microphones, and a lot has already been said about how to properly pre-amplify them so that you don't lose all of your low frequencies, because if you do it right, these are incredibly sensitive. You can really hear each and every single fiber as it tears and breaks. It's like a microscope for sound. But not much has been said about the opposite of that. What if you want to record something that's really loud, which you might want to do, for example, because contact mics are really good at isolating the sound of just a single instrument. The issue is that even a small disc like this can output a really high voltage. Look at that, that's like 80 volts peak to peak. And in general, audio equipment isn't really designed to handle voltages like that. I mean, audio signals are usually just a couple of volts. And this is especially true if you're building your own preamp and you're trying to power it with, say, a 9 volt battery. Well, at most, you're only going to be able to handle a 9 volt input signal. And even phantom power is only 48 volts. So you don't really stand a chance against this 80 volt piezo disc output. So somehow or another, you're going to need to reduce the voltage of the disc before you go into your preamp. And today I'm going to show you how to do that. So in general, it's very common for audio equipment to attenuate high voltage signals with a voltage divider, which is just two resistors. And this node here between the resistors has a reduced voltage, and the resistor values can be chosen to reduce the voltage by any amount. However, this doesn't really work for contact microphones. And that's because the piezo disc has a small amount of capacitance. So you have to think of it like this, like there's a capacitor here, even though it's kind of part and parcel of the disc itself. And the capacitance, together with the resistors, forms a high-pass filter. So you're throwing away your low frequencies. Well, that by itself isn't necessarily a problem. You just need to push this cutoff frequency far enough to the left that you no longer care about it, say 10 hertz or 1 hertz or whatever you're trying to do. And in order to do that, since the capacitance is small, these resistors need to be absolutely huge. This one probably needs to be a few mega ohms at least, and then to get any meaningful amount of attenuation, the other resistor would need to be several times larger than that. And you might be able to trick yourself into thinking that this works. So here the yellow oscilloscope trace is the original high voltage piezo disc output, and the blue trace is reduced with two 10 mega ohm resistors. So it does reduce the voltage, but the issue is that noise is proportional to the log of the resistance. And for that reason, you really don't want these huge resistors like this in your signal path because they spew noise. And so I've shown many times previously how I make these noise measurements, so I, I won't dwell on it, but here's my setup. And so here is kind of the original signal level of the piezo disc by itself. And here's the noise floor. And it looks like the mic is also picking up some traffic noise or something at low frequencies. But that's the gist of it. But anyway, like I said, this is without the voltage divider. Then with the voltage divider, this is the signal level. And it is reduced by a few decibels. Let's just call it negative six decibels and not look at it too closely because this is the noise floor. It's like 20 decibels higher just for a measly six decibels of attenuation, which only divides the voltage in half. And if you need more reduction than that, this is just going to get worse you'll be absolutely swimming in noise. So this type of voltage divider just really isn't going to work here. 
And so you might think, okay, I'll do something fancy with an op amp or with transistors or something like that. Like I'm building a preamp anyway, so maybe I should just include the option of having less than unity gain and I could reduce the signal that way. But I'll spare you the details because the short story is that you end up running into all the same problems again. You just kind of push them back a stage. Either the voltage is too high or you're trading off noise or some kind of filter. And so I'll just cut to the chase here because the solution to all of this is to use a capacitative voltage divider. So instead of using two resistors, you can use two capacitors and you can reduce the voltage by any amount by selecting the capacitor values appropriately. And the only thing you need to be careful about is that similarly as before, the piezo disc also has a small amount of internal resistance. So you have to think of it like there's a resistor here. And this time that resistance forms a low pass filter with the capacitors. So in this case, you're kind of throwing away your high frequencies and again, you're going to want to push the cutoff frequency far enough to the right that you no longer care about it, whether that's 44 kilohertz or even a few hundred kilohertz. And to do this, since the resistance is, well, whatever it is, a few hundred ohms, the capacitors are going to need to be teeny tiny. But that's not a problem. Teeny tiny capacitors are as common as mud. Most capacitors are teeny tiny. So I might suggest using something like one nanofarad here, and then to get any meaningful amount of attenuation, this one needs to be a few times smaller than that. So again, here the yellow oscilloscope trace is the original piezo disc by itself, and the blue one is with two one nanofarad capacitors, and you can see the voltage has been reduced. And this time, the really big important difference is that capacitors are noise free. So there's really no downside to this method. So here's my measurement setup again, and this is the signal level and the noise level of the piezo disc by itself. Then with two capacitors, here's the signal level, and this is actually a nice perfect six decibel reduction. And then here's the noise floor, and it is bang on exactly the same as before. And I can keep going. By adjusting the capacitor values, here's a 24 decibel reduction, and again, there's no extra noise. And maybe I'll just point out that in this graph, I've used a very quiet input signal, which is why the signal is starting to collide with the noise over there on the left. But obviously you would be doing this because you have a loud input signal to begin with. So in real life, you'd have wide separation between the signal and the noise. And in particular, if you are recording something that is 24 decibels louder and then reduce it by 24 decibels with this method, then the signal to noise ratio won't have changed. So back to my djembe, this little piezo disc is outputting 40 volts. And I'm not even hitting it that hard. And my little DIY preamp is just powered with four volts. So I really don't stand a chance. And so here it is with no reduction. Yeah, you might have to listen in headphones to really appreciate just how bad that sounds, but it does not sound good. And you can hear that the peaks are clipped and distorted sounding, and you can also see that in the waveform here. All of the peaks are cut off, basically at plus or minus two volts or something. So then I can just pop in two capacitors for a 24 decibel reduction, which will bring 40 volts all the way down to 2.5 volts. And this is what that sounds like. And as you can tell, it basically sounds the same in the sense that the tone quality hasn't changed, but now the peaks aren't cut off, like it sounds good. And you can also see in the waveform that the peaks haven't clipped, so that looks good. So you can hear that this really does work and it works well. I really think this is the best way of doing this. The other point I wanted to make about this is that this djembe is the only thing that I own that required an animal to die. And I don't feel great about that. I don't know, I was kind of thinking about holding a moment of silence or something, but I guess that doesn't really give the goat its life back. But I don't know, I guess I just didn't want to appear that I tacitly condone this. 
But anyway, yeah, that's it. That's how you reduce the voltage level of a piezo disc before you go into a preamp so that you can record really loud sounds. And I hope that was helpful. And if you like this video, maybe consider subscribing. Maybe consider buying a contact mic from me. Oh, I have iron-on patches now if you want some merch. Anyway, I guess that's it for now. Thanks for watching, as usual, and I guess I'll see you next time. Bye!